Welcome to Recreate with Canva, where we find a great looking design online and try to recapture it inside of Canva, pushing the software to its limits. Today we are looking at a really cool effect to have this photo represent this photo here as a Polaroid with a sharp inside. Let's get started. So I came across today's photo while browsing uh, Behance and it was a fantastic little concept where the inside of the Polaroid is sharp and then the outside of it is kind of blurred. So whatever's inside of the Polaroid is the same photo but in focus. Now the artist actually did a few interesting things too where it was also either time shifted so the Polaroid was the exact same scene but the time was different or that an object was there that wasn't there before. In this case, they actually animated the GIF too. So lots of fun things you could do with that if you had the proper photography to support it. But in our case here, we're gonna take one photo, blur it on the back, and then have it sharp on the inside. So we're gonna have to do a few tricks with Canva to make this happen. But let's see what happens. Because most notably, what Canva doesn't support as of yet is a um, kind of punch out ability. So if you're, if you're able to take one shape, choose a shape around it and say, okay, this amount, like cut it out. So since it doesn't have that, we're gonna have to get creative, but it's not gonna be that hard. Let's get started. So we'll start with this photo here, just uh, two friends enjoying themselves with a laptop, and we're going to figure out how to make it sharp. My general idea for how to do this is I'll be taking this photo, duplicating it onto the front, and then blurring it and cropping it. And then next we'll figure out how to draw kind of a Polaroid shape around it to get the white that we would be looking for. So we can kind of probably achieve that first right away as far as the blur. So we're gonna want to match the two photos up exactly. And moved it around a little bit. So let's make sure the, so I have the exact same photos on top of one another. I'm just gonna adjust the Transparency to see, in fact, yes, they are perfectly aligned. So great. Now for the one on top, I'm gonna to go ahead and crop it to what would eventually be our square. Not sure why it's not letting me do that, so fine. Because I guess that's now gone to, I guess the photo snapped into the background, unfortunately, which I tend to find happens with Canva. So instead we're going to crop it while it's small and then fight a little bit to get it to where we want it to be. So let's say, let's try to make it a bit more square. So we are cropping the same photo on top and then we're gonna fight to make it about the same size. As last time when I had the photo take up the full back, it actually became the background image, giving me, removing the crop ability. So, you know, already it's actually kind of a cool effect to have the same exact same photo, but just messed a little bit as far as the perspective and the size of it changed, but that's an effect for another time. So let's go ahead and increase it. And we're not gonna worry too much about being exact. Although I was able to get it pretty well. Let's put it there. Not bad. If I change the transparency, I think we'll see that we're almost bang on. So I just adjust the transparency to get it as close as possible. There we go. Not bad. Okay, so I'm actually going to lock that in place here because I don't want to be playing with that anymore. Now I've selected the background image. What I'm going to go ahead and do is go with an adjust and blur it. Now, this is going to slow down the computer a bit. That's okay. That's way too much because unfortunately we can't even see what the original photo was. So we're going to want to dial that way back. So, okay. Now we're starting to get into the right space. Let's start with a 10. And I think by adding the... Oops. Let's see if I can unlock it because I think it's still transparent. So transparent, which is really throwing off the... Yeah, that's really throwing off the effect for us. Okay, so there we have it. So we have the photo and only the one particular square that we wanted is in focus. Already kind of a cool effect. Now, as I mentioned, there's no uh, shape or kind of Polaroid 
element. You know what? Just for Polaroid. Well, I'll be darned. But as far as I can see, unfortunately, it looks like they're all paid. Let me try a free one. Yeah. So it looks like if you pay for it, you can actually get the shape already custom built. But as we're not in the business of paying for these things at the moment, let's instead build our own. So all I'm going to be doing is taking a bunch of squares and connecting them. And you know what? I'm actually going to challenge with myself with something else afterwards from based on the last... The last... Uh, recreate with Canva. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good thickness, maybe even a little smaller. As you can see when I clicked on here, let's see, now let me go any smaller. So trick for that, if in Canva you can't um, adjust the width of something anymore, you find this with lines too. If you add in a line and you want to make it thinner, at some point it doesn't let you. A trick for that is instead to grab the corner. So I can't physically make any smaller, not let me. I can instead grab the corner and scale it, which in effect lets me change the width of it. Now I can zoom in to make it longer and get it back to where I wanted it. Okay, the width and the height is about where I want it. Now let's go ahead and copy that. And we'll paste it. Let's shift it. 90 degrees, get it on top. We'll adjust that shortly to make sure it's perfectly aligned. And actually this is good too where you can use the tools of it, the alignment tool. So we'll go you know, align to the left, align top. Let's take a look and see if it was too aggressive. Not bad. Okay, let's zoom on out. Let's do the same thing. So we'll copy and we'll paste. We'll have it snap over to the right side. Looks like we've gone a little too long. So we'll click on the top one. We'll zoom in. Now to zoom in, I'm just pressing on PC Control and Plus or Control and Minus. So those are the shortcuts. Otherwise, you can come down here to the right side. Um, let me, oops. Let me get myself out of the way for a sec. So if you come to the right side, you'll see the size that you want to go and place that in there. Okay, let's keep going here. So I needed to zoom in because I could not see the this width drag or the uh, kind of the length of the height drag of it. So I need to zoom in to be able to see it. So I'll stay this zoomed in because I want to do some more edits. So I'm going to copy the top one, paste it, bring it down. And we'll make that for the bottom. And all of a sudden, we have a Polaroid picture. So I think we could stand to make it a little smaller. But to do so easily, I'm going to grab all four. I'm going to click Group. And instead, I'm going to grab the corner. Now I press, well, I'm, if I just grab the corner and start going, it takes it to the top left corner. If I hold Alt while doing that, it, br it shrinks it based on the middle, so it brings it into the middle there. So we can bring it into the girls in the center there a little further. And then next, as a last trip, let's grab a shadow element. So at the moment, Canva does not have a great selection of uh, shadow or a way to add a shadow besides a few tricks. So if you go to my website at justenough.design, I have a freebie which is all these this shadow pack that you can download. It's a simple bit of, it's a whole pack of PNGs that you're able to upload and add to Canva or Google Slides, PowerPoint, anything you want to use it on that makes it super easy to add in a nice shadow. So in this case I'm going to, oops, I just duplicated by accident. Delete that. And I just want to show a couple like ways you can do it. So there's the uh, circle one. So if you want to have it uh, kind of come out from the middle, or if it's kind of if you had a shadow that makes it look like it's kind of floating above things, that works well. Uh, there's full squares that you can download. So if you want the whole thing to have a bit of a shadow, and there's also cropped. So these guys here, which will allow you to snap it just right to the bottom of anything you're adding and add a bit of pop to it.
So that's at justenough.design. You'll find it on my homepage. Now that added a bit of a shadow, but it's not very prominent. So a trick for that, because it's a PNG and it's transparent, you can actually stack them to kind of duplicate the effect. So that'll make the darkness kind of slowly build up. So I just copy, Control C or Command C, then Control V, Control, control um, or Command V, snap it to where the other one is, snap it to where the other one is, you know, kind of just build up that shadow effect within reason. Now we're starting to see some artifacts because there seems to be too many of them, so we'll probably bring that down a little bit. There we go. And now that pops out a little bit for us. This shadow pack, I wonder if that's a little darker. There we go, that makes it stand out for sure. And then the only last thing that we could consider is on the adjustments if we want to. Uh, two ways to do it. One would be to work with the brightness or contrast to try to get the fade more in the background. What we could also do is just add a square and make it transparent over top of the background. So with a white or another color, kind of sneak in a, uh, make it fade more into the background that way. So we'll make the square the exact same width. I'm going to put that to the back and then the transparency, reduce it. Now that's with a gray. We can actually just put that to a white. Let's extend it out there just to make sure all the things are covered. doesn't matter if it goes outside the edges because we only ever download whatever's inside the edges. So to get a sense. So here's what it looks like with and without. You know what, I think that's a, it's kind of a cooler effect where it, in addition to the focus, by adding that kind of white to it, it also further fades it, making the photo pop. And you know what, let's see what we can do about adding just a quick text. Let's see. What I'd like to do is wonder if we can add a signature as if they've kind of been writing it. So one way to make a text seem less uh, obviously computer driven is to skew it. So in this case, I just twist it a little bit. So it has a bit of an angle. And let's see what we can do about finding a nice uh, script font or a handwritten font. See, that's excellent right there. So that looks like it's kind of done in marker and now these two are pro, which I'd like to prefer to stick to free ones. So there's Abyss. Let's see what we can find for free fonts. I think that first one might be the best. Of course, we could, if they are very nice handwriting. <laughs> uh, that's a bit thinner as if they've drawn that too. So a few options here for us. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the first one with Abyss. Kind of make it look as if they've kind of signed their photo after having a great day at designing at a cafe. So with a the right approach, a few interesting tick, tricks and a bit of tenacity, you can see that you're able to recreate just about anything in Canva. Hope you learned some good tricks along the way and cheers to your next great looking design.